Hello, everyone. Only have 20 minutes, so um, <laughs> everything I say, we're public company. <laughs> Just close your no. <laughs> We're required to, you know, everything I say here is forward looking, uh, and this is what we're supposed to as a legal. This is one of my favorite quotes. So um, I'll, I'll, I'll be talking about uh, big data and analytics, and for those of you who are not familiar with Splunk, I'll, we'll, I'll give a little overview of what Splunk is. But we're a uh, we're, uh, you know, platform for uh, big machine, uh, machine data. And I love this quote because really that's the rea reality these days, right? I mean, um, information and data and big data is with us every day and it's not going to go away and it's growing in petabytes and, and, and more. And what we need is good engines, good engine that would analyze uh, this data for us that will give us meaningful meaning to that data for our every day today. Uh, just a little bit about me. I'm, I'm with Splunk. I've been with Splunk for almost three years now. Uh, uh, and um, before Splunk, I've, you know, expert, uh, uh, technical uh, skills in, in various, uh, you know, t t uh, technologies like big data, security, cloud. And it's nice because that brings all that uh, Splunk. Splunk ties everything, all that together. Um, and I like this picture because this was uh, <laughs> shown at one of our uh, events. And one of our marketing guys, uh, a shout out to Mike, he put this together for me. If you don't know Lebanese, Yalla Habibi means let's go, my dear. So <laughs> this helps me kind of, you know, let's go, let's start. Uh, so a little bit about what Splunk is. So I'm wearing here one of our t-shirts. So I'm sure if you've been one of our, uh, one of the conference like RSA or, or, or any Cisco Live, you've seen lines of people lining up to Splunk booth to get uh, one of our t-shirts. So. Uh, this is me wearing one of them, and, and uh, we're famous for that T-shirt called uh, "Take the SH Out of IT." So <laughs> we're not only a T-shirt company, but we do sell software. So that's. <laughs> <laughs> uh, when you look at this, what do you see? Um, you know, this is a, your typical data center, uh, lots of servers. Uh, we see may, maybe for people, most common people see, yeah, I see servers, I see racks. That's all I see. But there's more. And actually, we actually see at Splunk, we see data. So everything you see here in this building, on these racks, um, in the floors, and the wires, there's data everywhere. There's data coming in and coming out. And, and what do you do? I mean, easily you can probably, there's petabytes of data, if not more, every day coming out of kind of from these machines. So what we call this, this is called machine data. It's, it's human-readable machine data that's uh, emitting from all these uh, devices. And they're coming at volume and different variety, different sources. Some data come from API. Some data comes from uh, syslog, as you know, or from, from pure uh, packet captures. So what do you do with that data? I mean, some people just buy just like a log uh, tool that just to look at some, some aspect of that data. But there's a lot going on in that data. Here, let's take a look at what does it look like. So here's an example of, of a, a data set across four data sources. I have order information. I have the middleware. My Java backend is emitting data. I have my uh, support, uh, my call center. Uh, there's data uh, about the calls. And there's Twitter also. Social media is another form of data. Well, what if I want to tie all the data together to try to find uh, issues in my environment before even a customer uh, uh, reports these issues. And that's where actually Splunk comes in. I'll, I'll talk more about that in detail. So people ask, what does the word Splunk mean? It comes from sp uh, spelunking, right? Digging the caves, exploring caves, underground caves. And that's what our mission is. Our mission is to give you meaning to your data, to help give you access to that data, make it valuable for you, make it easy, uh, usable by giving you access to tools to analyze that data and visualize that data. And Splunk is available to everyone in an in a, in a enterprise, so they can, everyone can access that data. There's no more need for silos of logs and tools to be spread out or different part of the organization. You just go to Splunk, and that's where all your data is. So back to my example. So if you look at these connecting the dots, let's connect the dots here to look at the story here I'm looking at. What I'm looking at here is, let's say my executives say, I want to catch issues in our environment, in my application environment, before even they are reported. And that's one way to look at that. If I connect all these four data sources by customer ID, so I have a customer who placed an order, 
and they're having an issue. So I have an issue happen right now in my Java environment in the back end. I can track that back to my which order this was placed and look at my support ticket. So someone's trying to place an order, it failed, uh, generated Java error, they made a phone call with the support team, and they, they tweeted about it. This company is, you know, they tweeted something bad about you, you are uh, providing the service. So Splunk can actually give you the ability to tie all that information together and do that in real time. So you can actually catch before something happens uh, right away. E even if it happens one customer, what if another customer is going to start ha uh, have, to have the same issue? So Splunk is going to give you that ability to alert you right away when these, these patterns happen in your environment. I want to play you a clip. Uh, actually, Yelp is uh, a recent success story that was uh, shared publicly. And this morning, actually, Yelp had a webinar to discuss about how they use Splunk. Let's see if this video can play well. We get audio. Oh, okay. We're doing live technical uh, yeah. integrations. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're good, hopefully. We have audio? Okay. Yelp's mission is to bring. Okay. There's well in excess of 10 right, to one more time. consumers and local businesses together in ways that are not possible otherwise. There's well in excess of 10 terabytes of data flowing through Yelp every day. Prior to using Splunk, our log data was actually in a variety of disparate data sources. With Splunk, we're now able to bring them all together into a centralized place and take actionable insight on multiple data sets, including log data, database data, and data from third parties, all together in the same interface, and then provide beautiful visualizations that are actionable and available to business users with minimum level of engineering investment. Splunk has improved how Yelp develops and deploys new applications by giving us direct insight into the code deployment process and monitoring in real time our server fleet to ensure that code deployments are smooth and error free to be able to deliver features to users as fast and reliably as possible. It was very easy for our non-technical team to implement Splunk uh, simply because once the reports had been created, the visualizations were clean and beautiful and we didn't do any training when we rolled it out. We simply gave the users access and explained the visualizations that they were being presented with and they were up and running. The real-time nature of Splunk is extremely important to us to be able to address the real-time needs of our business. Food delivery happens in real time. A key component of customer satisfaction is being able to take real-time action on their order and ensure they get things on time every time. No one likes waiting around for their food to be delivered. With Splunk's help, we're making those wait times as short as possible. I don't believe there's any other product in the market that's able to quickly bring together the diverse data sets, offer the powerful language to the engineers to be able to do the analysis, and then ultimately deliver beautiful, visual, actionable reports to the business users. So uh, what's neat about the Yelp case is that they're actually bringing in about 10 terabytes from many data sources, including AWS Redshift, Kafka, uh, Docker, and many, many other more databases as well. And they're focusing on, on their infrastructure. They're tying in, looking at all their infrastructure layer, all the way from uh, servers to web uh, to actual performance of the application. And that's all happening in real time. Another cool thing is that the data the democratization, which is basically sharing that data among all the users in the organization and give them all access. So that's your DevOps capability right there, be able to give everybody transparent exposure, what's going on in, on the environment so they can quickly make decisions uh, to push the uh, updates. So this is an overview of what Splunk is. So Splunk is a full feature platform. 
So uh, from indexing, search, and analytics of, the, of big uh, data, you don't need to b get different components if you want to uh, do your own that, uh, analytic solution. It's all in, in Splunk. Um, you, you collect the data from any uh, sources, as we mentioned, uh, any location, any volume, and also any types of data. There could be servers, it could be sensors. And also what you do is actually you're able, you're doing an analytic, uh, uh, search, search on that data in real time. Uh, we don't store any uh, metadata on the, uh, we don't store the fields uh, in or the schema on that data. We actually extract the schema on the fly at search time. So that when the next time a type of data changes, it automatically get recognized and actually uh, extracted on the fly uh, as well. And also Splunk has the ability to create reports, of course, and analyze the data uh, through dashboards. And also we have customization. So as, as a developer, you can customize any dashboard uh, that's provided in any app or uh, on, on, on our marketplace. And also we have provide developer tools, which we're going to be talking about um, uh, as well. And also among the tools, we also have toolkits. So machine learning is one of our toolkits that we provide that you can actually uh, you know, use and also to augment more your anal analytics uh, in your own application. Uh, on that. So literally with Splunk you can actually, with the Splunk tools you can develop your own analytical solution, analytic solution, and I'll mention there's an example of that, uh, that Cisco recently uh, uh, developed a s an analytic solution for Mexico City. So in summary, Splunk is schema on the fly, we don't score schema, we're not like your traditional database, uh, indexing of uh, universal data uh, in any sources, um, and uh, at any volume, there's no backend database, it's just an index, and, and there's no need to filter data. You don't need to uh, create filters and have a special uh, a way to pro process your data. You just create a search. You just ask Splunk a question, and then it will give you the answer. Kind of, uh, you know, almost uh, not only just a search, search capability like a search engine, but beyond that. You can actually ask statistical questions. You can apply also machine learning models and predictive analytics. So what do you get with that? So Splunk evolved from you know, 10 years ago just being a log tool for IT search, uh, but more to cover many use cases, because now we're able to collect all this data from different data sources, give ability to analyze that data, and ab ability to develop your own uh, content uh, to analyze that data. So you actually have applications. We have partners and developers developing different applications in the areas of IT operation, application management, security is a big area, uh, business analytics, industrial, um, and, and IoT, of course. So Cisco and Splunk, Cisco has amazing set of APIs. We all know we're all here to talk about APIs. And then we've been uh, working with Cisco for many years now on several integrations. And we have a lot of joint, happy joint customers using all those integrations for many of their uh, uh, you know, exposure of, of their data and, and to get uh, this insight on what's going on in their environment. So you have rich data from security products like ICE, uh, Firepower, Umbrella, Meraki. Uh, CloudLog. So these are all recent, the last you know few months integrations that we're and then we're, um, I work personally with the Cisco team, amazing team, to working on integrating uh, all, all those uh, all those data and APIs. Uh, in the data center world, we have UCS data that we can actually use in Splunk and use that part of monitoring the whole infrastructure. And yesterday, I believe Chris Martin was uh, from Cisco. Was the, uh, Chris is here. Hi, Chris. Uh, <laughs> Chris uh, demoed and talked about Spark integration. So actually, now with Splunk, you can do bidirectional integration. Not only Splunk can ingest data, but Splunk can actually initiate actions from from uh, Splunk itself into another uh, system. In that case, Spark, creating Spark rooms on the fly. We also have the Adaptive Response Framework, which is a framework that allows, in the security world, able ability to integrate with many different security technologies. So you can actually trigger actions uh, and augment intelligent uh, uh, feeds, uh, threat feeds, into your also Splunk environment. This is an example of what you can build out of just out of the box from Splunk and using the free apps that we have, uh, free Cisco integrations. So you can actually build your own security solutions if you want, or you can use the Splunk Enterprise uh, uh, Security Solution Premium app. And you do that all through the integrations that we have with the APIs. So imagine, let's say, uh, what happened with recently with the uh, WannaCry, uh, with the uh, uh, ransomware attack. 
if you have access to all that data in your environment, you have all them in Splunk, you can actually connect the dots very quickly to see the behavior going on. You can actually look at context of the device brought into your environment. You can actually get the, the, the malware trigger event from, uh, from AMP, and you can correlate that with which device in ICE, and also take an action using the adaptive response from Splunk outbound into your environment to maybe quarantine this device. Uh, I want to move on quickly. I have five minutes. So this is the. Uh, I want to give an example of uh, an integration with API. So Miraki, we have uh, been uh, several uh, integrations with Miraki, what we call add-ons, and then because ability we have in Splunk called the HTTP event collector, we're able to bring in all that data through cloud, cloud all through on-premise or cloud to cloud, and you can bring do that all at, at scale. So HTTP event collector is a, uh, a way to collect data. Uh, over HTTP with no agent required, no software is required. All you do is to have uh, the endpoint that's um, that, uh, the generating that data to post that through HTTP into your uh, Splunk uh, box, and it's very um, easy to configure and scales to millions of nodes. So all of you, I want you now, I want to showcase this uh, HTTP event collector. So I have this demo that you can actually do right now. Everybody have your phone. And I'm sure we're all connected on internet. No, nobody these days is not connected on internet. Go to this URL or use or scan. So I want to demonstrate here ability to live. You can actually uh, collect that data from your from your question. This we're gonna poll. This is a poll of just two questions, uh, and then we'll try and make it fun. And in real time, I'm gonna show the dashboard. Uh, in real time, looking at that data that's coming from your phone into this uh, Splunk environment, I will show you. So I see everybody shaking their phones. So part of the poll is answer a question, what's your favorite food? And, and also, uh, looks like sushi is the most preference. So as you see live right now, we're collecting your input live from the, your uh, browser on the phone so using this HTTP event collector and getting live data uh, and, and we can actually look at how many people are using the Mac, Android, iPhone right now. And uh, there's an option which I turned off. There's an option to ask you to log in so we can actually tell who's, who's, uh, who's answering the questions faster. I just left it anonymous right now. So we can actually track who is faster, shaking their phone faster than... Uh, than, than uh. But it looks like sushi uh, is so far as the... <laughs> The most favorite, the winner, yes. I was hoping falafel, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was actually thinking to make falafel on tacos, but that's good. Um, so let's move along. So this, how we do the integration with Meraki is using the HTTP event collector. Uh, the Meraki cloud, as you know, integrates through the API by posting the events directly into Splunk. And this could be Splunk on-premise or Splunk in the cloud. Uh, and then we can do cases like analyze all that data in, Sp in Splunk by looking at uh, how many customers I have coming into my environment. We're going to be using uh, Meraki, for example, in conferences, right? If you need to track people walking in the conference, and you can see which booth they're going to more, uh, you know, the most, which popular, which speaker could be popular more than the other. So you can look at the return visits. I can also use Splunk ability to do pred predictive analytics to predict wait time of, of customers on different uh, days of the week. So I can maybe want to uh, staff my store more people on certain days uh, more than other days. So I can look at my, uh, use my Meraki data in Splunk to, to predict that. Um, I want to talk about this recent uh, project that was shared publicly, and it's, uh, this is in Mexico Conectado. So in Mexico City, uh, in Mexico as a country, they have initiative to increase the, uh, the spread of internet usage for uh, schools and government uh, and many, many places in, 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 the, in the city. And um, one thing uh, was uh, the Meraki was deployed across many different locations, and Cisco used Splunk uh, to analyze that data to give real-time analytics on the connectivity and internet usage with the, with the service providers. So um, quickly, I'll show you uh, a demo here. This is in Spanish. So I'll, I'll and I have Colin here with Moraki. He can actually help me out. Uh, so basically, what you look at here is a dashboard in Splunk that showing you the total number of usage, internet usage consumption going on right now across in, 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 in Mexico. 
actually, I can look here what's unique about uh, in Splunk. Actually, I can look at the data from different angles. What we call, they, they call this interface multi-dimensional uh, a dashboard. So I actually, actually drill down here and say, well, I want to look at my education sector. Let's see how many in education uh, folks are using the, uh, the usage of, of the internet. And actually, I have a little translate plugin here. So as you can see here, I have this is a number of users total right now connected, and how many uh, bandwidth consumed right now. So you could probably have a certain target goal you want to. You can look at that here in real time and, 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 and look at that. I like this dashboard too, uh, looking at the operators. So this is distribution of the, the service providers. So maybe the government will require certain service providers to have a uh, certain quota for the government, for example, or for users. That's one way to look at that visibility in, in, in real time. So again, this was Meraki. Uh, this is how it was done. This is the architecture. Meraki data flowing in into, uh, into queuing, uh, into query system. Uh, all that data happening through HTTP, being collected by Splunk HTTP event collector. And it's been done at scale. So you imagine the number of data here, in millions and millions and terabytes of data, all collected uh, through uh, Splunk here in this case with Meraki. Um, very easy to integrate with Splunk. I want to mention some of the tools that we have, and we're focusing a lot also on, on helping developers to develop quickly. And so I'm going to wrap up here. Uh, so these are the tools that we have uh, available. Go to dev.splunk.com uh, for, for information more about these tools. Uh, and you can download Splunk for free and download some of the apps for free. And also, we launched a few months, uh, few months back the Splunk community page on DevNet. So we encourage you to have all the resources you need to develop contents and apps for, for, for Splunk for developing your own analytics uh, solution like was done for Mexico. Thank you very much. Cool. Warm. Thanks a bunch.